Hi, I'm Emily Gearhart with M6, and today we will be talking to President Mark Johnson and former board member Sean Winston for the Marysville Little League. They will be providing us with some background information about the team and help us with some answers about registration for this upcoming season. Let's get started. How long has the Marysville Little League been around, and why do you believe it is a great opportunity for kids? The Marysville Little League uh, has been around since 1952. I had to go back and look at the, some records and like that, but yeah, since 1952, we've been chartered through uh, Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Uh, and uh, the Marysville Little League pr uh, program is pretty proud of uh, a lot of the accomplishments over the years. And it just gives boys and girls alike a, a real great opportunity, some great memories from their Little League experiences, both in baseball and softball. You know, in a lot of cases, this is going to be their first encounter with, uh, with those sports. And uh, as, you know, serving on the board and like that, you just want to get good quality coaches involved, uh, knowing that uh, you're dealing with different, uh, you know, different personalities and like that. And uh, the ultimate goal is, uh, and the big picture is everybody. You know, uh, you, you just want to make that a great experience for them. And like I said, in most cases, this sometimes uh, will be the first experience with um, baseball and softball for these, uh, these youngsters. It must be difficult to plan for so many kids and teams. Registration must help you organize better. Can you register online? If so, how do you do it? Our registration is mainly done online. We open up in December to start a registration um, online. And when you get in there, you have to create an account profile. So when you get in there, you go into the registration tab, get your information, you're going to enter it and you're going to create a profile with your email address, a password, and then ask for some personal information. And then if you've never registered before, you have to get your child's name in there and, and put all of their information in so it helps select the correct divisions. So when you're inside in the profile looking around, it, it'll give you the options depending on the child's age. So it helps organize it that way. The website also you know, will justify and put everything in different order and allow us to organize it in that aspect of it. I'm sure there will be tons of kids ready to play this year. When does registration end? When and where are tryouts going to be held? Our registration ends the same day as our tryouts, March 21st. Um, that's also the day for both the boys and girls tryouts are March 21st. As of now, we don't have a set time, but the most likely start around 8 a.m. and run through most of the afternoon. With the registration, you can walk in that day and also register. We also have a live registration event on March 2nd, uh, Monday, from 5 p.m. till 7 p.m., where you can come in and try on the sizes, look at the uniforms, and make sure that everything fits because once the uniforms are ordered, we can't uh, rescind those and order different sizes. Every team and player needs some equipment to be ready to play. What equipment is needed from the player and the parent and what does the team provide? The league provides uh, obviously the uniforms. In most leagues you'll get the pants, hat, jersey, and belt. In the girls divisions they don't, they don't get the hats, they get the socks rather than the, the hats. Um, also, we provide certain bats. Uh, we also provide, obviously, balls for, for the games and for practices in all of the catcher's equipment. The main things that the kids have to get are obviously footwear. Cleats are preferred, but tennis shoes are okay to a certain extent. They obviously, they need their own gloves. They can bring their own bats. Uh, most kids get their own baseball bats and bring them, but we do provide a few of them um, if they want to use the league bats. We understand that Little League is only for a certain age group. What age groups can participate? Yep, our age, actually, Little League starts from the age of four years old in T-ball all the way up to the age of 16. Our T-ball divisions go from four, five, and six years old and work their way up. So we have two different T-ball divisions, I think, is one of the things that a lot of people get confused on. We have T-ball one and T-ball two. T-ball one is for four and five-year-olds that have never played before. And then T-ball two is for the five and six-year-olds that have played at least one year. So we try to, if they have advancement, they can go up and learn more about the game. And it goes all the way up to age 16. A lot of people don't know that Little League doesn't stop at 12. We do have what we call juniors division, which is 13, 14, and then seniors division, which is 15, 16. We've heard you are renovating the fields. What changes will we see and how is that going? Yep. What you've probably seen at the fields if you've been there in the last year is that we're down to five fields. They've renovated the front three fields. They're all brand new and have grass infields in two of them. The other one is mainly softball. The other big changes that are coming now, we're currently in the middle of the process of putting up scoreboards. So all five fields, by the time next season starts, will have scoreboards on them so everybody can see what the scores are, what inning they're in, and it also have a countdown for time limits. 
There's been some tremendous renovations with uh, the ball fields. In the last couple of years, the city of Marysville's uh, put in some uh, uh, you know, large sums of money to help uh, renovate uh, the ball fields themselves from uh, coaching and having uh, my, my children play uh, before and after some of the renovations, uh, just amazing. It's a super, you hear a lot of great compliments from parents and grandparents and also other traveling teams. And they've been uh, uh, you know, revamped to the point where we are now attracting districts and state tournaments. Uh, last year we had a girls uh, state softball tournament and wonderful compliments with that. Since you are making changes in the new fields, what are some of your favorite things about them? I think my favorite thing is probably going to be the scoreboards when they're done. It's one of the questions to where everybody that comes to the game, hey, what's the score? What inning are we in? How many outs are there? And those things will be able to, they'll be able to look in the outfield and go, oh, look, those are, all the answers are there that we need to know because those are the biggest questions we get from parents. I mean, I've coached for years now and that's every, hey, what's the score? They're always coming up to the score table and into the team and asking those questions. So I think that's one of the, one of the coolest things out there. A big league like this needs many people to help. How many volunteers are needed and what types of tasks do the volunteers do? Well, currently our board, our executive board is made up of nine members. We have nine voting members that we are the ones that if there's any kind of decisions that need to be made, uh, vote on those. We also have numerous members at large and volunteers that help throughout the year. To put a number on it, it's tough because everybody's a volunteer in our league, all the coaches that are the parents, all of the, um, anybody that helps with the umpiring along with all the way through. Our biggest thing with the concession stands, those are also volunteers that come in and help out with our league and our kids. Um, it, we're always looking for volunteers, we're always looking for people to help. So if anybody wants to come out and help, they can always reach out to us via the contact information on our website. Um, most of our positions just consist of, you know, who runs the softball leagues, who runs the baseball leagues and different commissioners, and then also the, the executive board of the president, the vice president, treasurer, and the secretary. Umpiring is always a tough job, but who do you get to umpire? With the umpires, really try to reach out. Uh, one, it's a th thankless position. You know, you have some parents that show up and uh, think you know, they're getting a major league experience and every call should be perfect, and that's just not always the case. So we try to get uh, some of the youngsters that have played in the system, um, you know, in softball and baseball that are like currently in high school and they come back. Um, but all in all, the parents have been very respectful, uh, knowing that, uh, you know, mistakes are going to be made like that. But uh, it is a great opportunity for a little employment, some uh, money for those high school uh, students that, again, that have played in the past in the system. And we try to reward them by looking out and reaching out to them to get them back and because uh, we know they enjoy it. We do have adult umpires that can do it, and that's something we, you can also, if anybody's ever interested in umpiring, can reach out to us via the information on our website. Um, it's, we have a lot of returners, but anybody that's ever interested, the 16 or older, we always you know, encourage them to, to ask us. We understand that you have a personal connection to one of the tournaments that you guys hold. When and where is it held, and can you explain a little bit more about the tournament? One of the tournaments is uh, now called uh, Ernie Winston All-Star uh, Baseball Tournament. It's named after my dad. Uh, many years ago, he put a lot of time in like that uh, into the Marysville Little League system and uh, recently passed away here. And uh, so quite honored, our family is, that uh, they have named it uh, the Marysville Tournament after my dad. And traditionally, it's always been in uh, August, that first week of August. But I, the last few years, the enroll, enrollment has kind of declined. So uh, some thinking has gone into it, and now they have moved it to uh, the last weekend in June, like June 26, 27, 28. And we highly expect uh, the numbers will be back up uh, where it used to be years ago. And that's what we're trying to do because that's a good revenue source for the Little League program. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that this was able to help you answer some questions you may have had about information and registration for this upcoming season. We hope all of the kids have a great summer enjoying the game of baseball and softball. I'm Emily Gearhart with M6, your hometown station.